So now we have many people and we have time. We have one period of time. When there is time, that exists. Debt takes the form of bonds, which are uh, exchanged in the credit market. If one of these guys lends a bond to another guy, then after one period he will get the same bond plus some interest, meaning he will get back B times 1 plus the interest rate. We are assuming that we have a perfectly competitive credit market, so uh, no individual alone can affect the interest rate. If one individual holds a positive stock of bonds, that means he's a creditor, he's buying bonds. But if he has a negative position, that means he's a debtor and that he is issuing bonds to borrow from the credit market. But if we add all the positions of borrowers and lenders, we will uh, find out that on aggregate, the stock of bonds is equal to zero. That is because in a closed economy, uh, one dollar lent is uh, equivalent to one dollar borrowed. So if the change in the stock of bonds for an individual is less than zero, that would mean that if he was a lender, both are positive, but he is lending less. If he was a borrower, then both are negative, and he is borrowing more. He is increasing his debt, but on aggregate, he's all zero. We also have some quantity of money in the economy, big M, and uh, some money held by each individual, small m. We have the price uh, by wage. You can buy or sell one unit of output. And we have that that price doesn't change. It's constant. There is no inflation. So we can express money in real terms by dividing it over P. That is the value of money with respect to the commodities that it buys. So if an individual can use two financial instruments, bonds, and money, the change in one period in his position in the credit and the money market will be his savings. So individual savings for one period can be positive, negative, or even equal to zero. But in aggregate terms, uh, there are no savings if we have a closed economy. That is, uh, the stock of bones is both zero and the money stock does not change. So no savings in aggregate terms. So now imagine we have one guy. One guy that is happy because he knows how many hours he's going to work, how many units he's going to consume, and uh, how many units of output he's going to produce to maximize his utility. Then he knows he can get funds, he can get money by selling his output at the given price. He can also get money if he lend some bonds in the previous period, which uh, now are paid back with uh, some interest. And he also has available the quantity of money that he had in the previous period. Those are his funds. And he can do basically two things with them. He can either consume or he can save. So rearranging to solve for households savings. This minus this is equal to this minus this. And we assume that the individual's holdings of money are constant. When we aggregate, we see that if we keep this assumption, this goes out, and this is equal to zero, and this is also equal to zero, so this is all equal to zero, and it's equal to all this. But this is also equal to zero. So if we are in a closed economy, this minus this is equal to zero. So we can conclude that for a closed economy, all that is produced is also consumed.